Hey y'all, today on the farm, I'm fixing to drop this sprayer off this tractor hooked to the fertilizer spreader buggy and we're gonna top dress some grain sorghum with fertilizer and discuss the differences and look at the results between no-till with a cover crop and conventional till. On the way to the grain sorghum, we gotta pass through the butter bean field. So we're gonna sit here, stop here for a second, check out some of these pods, see what the crop's looking like, see what day we think we may pick. It's getting close and not quite filled out yet. Those aren't, aren't fluffed up yet. For some reason, for some reason, this side is a little further behind than this side of the road. They're all planted at the exact same time, but this side is starting to fill the pods a little bit quicker. Everything's done exactly the same, but with agriculture, you never know. You know, there's always little tiny things that influence uh, the outcome. So we've had the same water, same fertilizer, same plant date. They were planted, I went down that side and turned and came down this side. But we have a difference of about three days of maturity on this side versus that side. We have a strong chance of rain over the next four or five days in a row. So that means now is the perfect time to top dress the fertilizer. We don't want to put the fertilizer out and then it not rain because it will slowly evaporate and we'll lose all that money. So if we put it out ahead of the rain, put it out on the ground, spread it out, broadcast it, and then it rains, it melts into the dirt, into the ground, gets absorbed by the roots instead of evaporating into the air and being lost forever. For those y'all who hadn't seen me pull this fertilizer tender before, the way it works, it has a bull wheel. I can uh, engage it with hydraulics on the tractor, but if you want to pull it with a pickup truck or something like that to do a deer food plot, you can also engage it and disengage it manually. The bull wheel comes down and touches the drive wheel, the wheel that's on the ground. It makes this wheel spin, what then turns the cogs, the pulleys, everything, what then spins the spinners here that throw the fertilizer or wheat seed or whatever you put in there and what drive the drag chains this is a drag chain there are pockets in this chain there's fertilizer in there or you can put cover crop seed or whatever you want in there the item that's in there will be caught in these holes in the chain as the chain pulls out that material flows out and falls down here onto the spinners where it gets slung out the trick is since this is ground driven instead of hydraulically driven you have to maintain a constant speed if you slow down it doesn't throw it as far and if you speed up it throws it further so if you want a uniform seeding rate or a uniform fertilization rate you have to maintain a uniform speed i've seen it on the internet at regular that uh people criticize farmers and they say hey if y'all would just stop tilling and stop spraying you wouldn't have to worry about weeds. You wouldn't have to worry about erosion. You wouldn't have to worry about having enough water. All this and that, you, you would make more profit. That is not true. It's not true. Um, there are different programs, different uh, set of circumstances that work better or worse in different areas. Every crop, every location, every field has different requirements. What works really good in this field for one crop one year might not work at all the next year for the same crop uh, so circumstances always vary this right here as i said was no-till planted we have a good cover crop and no-till and i came in here after the planting but before emergence and sprayed a burn down herbicide so we have a herbicide over no-till with a cover crop that is a a good scenario for a lot of crops in this country not every crop but a lot of crops that is a good scenario it works really good with cotton down here in the southeast uh, what works better for cotton is if you strip tilled it in the, into the cover crop because then you have that soft root zone now different years different things work better but more times than not a strip till into a cover crop with a burn down herbicide works really good with cotton what I did right here though was I did not spray a burn down herbicide. So as is perpetuated constantly on the internet, stop spraying, stop tilling, and things will get better. This is no till, no spray, 
planted at the exact same time as that. This is what happens when you don't till and you don't spray. You don't have a crop. That's just reality. Um, you'll see here we have solid, solid weeds have come up, grasses and weeds. There's a differentiation of it. There's a, there's a difference in weeds and grasses. We have a lot of buffalo grass, crab grass, and nut grass here, along with pig weed and coffee weed. And subsequently, the crop is only about six inches tall and it is starved for nutrients. Right here, where I have sprayed a burn down herbicide on the exact same crop, the crop is around 18 inches tall and there's no very little weed pressure. There's a little bit of weed pressure, but very little. The only difference between that and this is a burn down herbicide. There is no other difference whatsoever. So, no crop. You know, we're not gonna, that may produce a head. This here is not gonna do anything. That's not gonna do anything. We have a foot here with no plants. The only difference in this and that is a burn down herbicide. Very small, minor difference. It's gonna make a huge difference come time to harvest. This portion of the field was subsold prior to harvesting the wheat. So this portion of my field right here had a poor stand of wheat. We had, we had chained seeds. There was two different seed varieties of wheat out here. And right along this line right here is where we swap from one seed to the other seed. This particular seed had a lower germination. The stand was not sufficient. So around April, the 1st of April, the maybe the end of March, I came in here and terminated this portion of the field. I, I dissed it in. And then after that, I ran a subsoiler out here. So a deep tillage out here, 18 inch uh, deep tillage and followed up with a field cultivator to get a nice smooth, even seed bed. I left that alone from April until June, early June when we planted this and we fell in here just like the rest of the field no tilling but this had been tilled up two months prior and planted it same day same time same rate you see the field is super clean no weeds the grain sorghum itself is darker green and is taller it is bigger has a better stand in it as well and you can see right to the inch all the way across this field the tilled versus no till so the that was just planted in wheat this is planted in ground that was prepared pretty big difference there i get i get uh when i do my tillage videos in the year i get some some kickback from people say hey you shouldn't be tilling or you shouldn't be subsoiling that's wasted fuel wasted time and i maintain that subsoiling on the crops i grow on the dirt that i farm is the biggest return on investment of anything i do I still haven't contracted this grain sorghum yet. I've been exploring some options, trying to sell uh, either the harvested grain. I'm, I'm projecting an 85 to 90 bushel uh, harvested grain out here, or sell it as silage. So I would cut it before it is fully dried down and before you would typically combine it. Instead of silage, and with, with a silage, instead of going by bushels, you go by tonnage. I would expect an eight to nine tons of silage per acre versus 90 bushels of uh, grain per acre. We've got to weigh the options out, see which one's going to be the most lucrative. I get asked a lot of times what fertilizer I use or what fertilizer I put out. All my fertilizer is custom blend per soil analysis, so we'll take soil tests in the fields before planting and, and during the season and anytime i'm applying fertilizer it is a 100 custom blend 
per the current needs of the crop. I'm in the subsoil ground now, and you can tell. <laughs> it's doing a little bit, getting a little muddy out here. Not sinking down as bad as I thought I would be, but it is definitely uh, definitely a little muddy, a little soft on this subsoil ground, a lot, lot softer than the, than the non-tilled uh, ground was. I'm still just really, really amazed at that hard contrast between the subsoil and no-till. It's just amazing. You can see it even better when you're up in the tractor looking down on it, but man, it is a hard, hard green line that separates the subsoil from the no-till one thing that's really awesome about the no-till out here is there's a lot of you see some wheat wheat uh left on the ground a little bit of last year's peanut crop still around and so instead of that being incorporated like it is over here it's laying on the surface and there are a lot of dove birds out here y'all from outside the south might not know what i'm talking about but there's a lot of doves out here maybe uh some opportunities early fall out here we got a huge power line that crosses this field and late in the evening them doves are stacked up on that line so many of them that the line's hanging low i was spraying atrazine out here yesterday and there was doves getting up like cubbies of quail all over the field a lot of birds a lot of doves out here so the no-till is much better for wildlife you do have a lot more life in the field when you have no till you have grasshoppers and all kind of stuff going on out here i love to see those doves flying it reminds me of my youth when everybody grew grain sorghum and wheat down here because everybody had pigs that's for the bottom fell out on the hog market down in south georgia everybody had pigs back then everybody grew grain sorghum to feed the pigs and we all shot doves every weekend uh now hardly nobody grows hardly anybody grows uh grain sorghum nobody has pigs virtually and the dove population is a tiny fraction of what it used to be but growing up there's always a dove hunt somewhere Now that I have all the fertilizer broadcast or top dressed on the grain sorghum, my beautiful and intelligent wife has brought me a sign for the front of the store. You wouldn't believe how many uh, people ride back and forth. I tell them, hey, we're at 1300 West Bluffton Road. There's a sign there that says 1300. This is a big white building with a barn quilt on the front of it. And uh, there's a big old gray truck part out front that says MP Produce on the door and people will ride by and they'll turn around at my hay barn down there and they'll come back by and they'll turn around again and say, we can't find y'all, so I'm standing here looking at you. You've, you've rode by two or three times. Uh, so anyway, my wife for Father's Day brought me a huge sign. We're gonna put it up on the front of the building so everybody can find us more easier. Well, that's gonna do it for today. We got a lot of things accomplished. I gotta start shelling peas tomorrow cause y'all gonna be in here Saturday morning wanting more peas and waiting on the butter beans. I'm getting calls every day about butter beans. We're not quite, quite there on butter beans. I got the Oxbow, the BH100 pulled into the shed there. We're dialing it in, getting it ready to pick those butter beans cause the butter beans are all machine harvest. But we got a 
sign up a fertilizer spread is a pretty good day we got the rain we've been praying for for so long and i think the lord's gonna bless us with a little bit more later on which would be great so we can incorporate that fertilizer fully i hope y'all learned something today if you have time swing by the store now, now that you know where we are because we got a sign up swing by the store get you a today on the farm shirt if you're not local we can drop them in the mail to you check us out on facebook mp produce we can send it to you wherever you live i thank all y'all for watching hope to see you next time